I'm yelling. Love how I, I love it. It's cool. This is really cool happening. Today we're going to work on, uh, I started this and I'm making a video on this too. Now it's hard to make the video because uh, I'm actually doing the live feed of it. So that video is going to get cut short. Um, as far as what you're going to see carved in the video, you're going to see it all here from the live feed. So there's not going to be any sped up or time lapse stuff. We're just going to go through this carving. Uh, working on a canoe bear. Um, I had to re, uh, redo the head because I had, as I was explaining it yesterday, I had put it in the wrong place and kind of was in a hurry. I uh, got a big wood pile out there. Got a real big wood pile yesterday. Um, tree guys dropped off the, a huge load of juicy green pine and I've been stressing about wood a little bit. I, I didn't let on to that, but uh, it's kind of hard when you're nitpicking through piles of stuff and you got to do all that cleaning. Now you get good juicy pine. Um, I'm going to take you guys outside and show you this uh, because this there is, yep. Let me see here. Switching, switching directions. Um, just taking you guys out to the wood pile real quick to show you yesterday what I did. Yo, Woody Wood, what's up, man? I see you. Um, Goody here. Uh, so yesterday, I'm pulling out of here. And I'm going to show you real quick. The wood pile that I normally pick from. It's quite a distance down. It's a walk. So if I don't have a machine here, guess what I'm doing? Because getting my truck in and out of here even sometimes gets real soupy and nasty. The bigger trucks make huge ruts. Uh, with my machine that I had yesterday, it was a mini excavator. You will see a video of that. That's what I made an actual publishable video I have to edit through it uh, but as I track back and forth here all day yesterday grabbing logs that whole entire space down there was piles of logs now I moved a lot of stuff around sorted it pushed pushed the junk piles up for the tree guys over there's still some pine down there straight ahead near that log pile um, but as I came in here, I kind of flattened the space out, which I think is going to help all of us in the long run, I hope. I hope it doesn't cause problems. But I got green pine. Look at this chunker sitting right here. There's a nice one. I got to come down and just pick it up, grab it, put it in the wheel or something. So I don't have the machine here today. That was a great deal of expense to me to get the machine here. It's about 300 bucks per day plus fuel. Um... This pile here, I call this the sick pile. This is part of a tree that, that had a disease. The base of it, I think over there, I moved the base somewhere. Actually, that right there at the tip of my finger, there is core shot, there was ants in it. So all of this, anytime you see vines growing on a big pine tree, um, chances are that that wood is going to mold. I can't tell you, you know, that's all I can say about it from experience. Um, so this down here is going to be pick and pull easy stuff for me to get to, uh, even by hand. And I'm just going to sort through it by hand when I get the time. The big, the big goal yesterday, I mean, this was just piles of stuff, right? Just, you could hardly get even down in here with a big truck. So I wanted to clear it out so they can come in and dump more. There's, there's some chunks I brought down here I can pick through those so now I have reserves how I was saying that one video um, get yourself a good piggy bank of wood going because the more ahead you are on wood uh, the more likely you are to succeed and not spend that time worrying or looking for the wood or trying to figure out oh, how am I gonna get to that and and then it's got to usually like those cleaning ones the ones with the mold in them piggy bank the reserve pile i call it um which is stuff that gets moved around. 
And if they need room, they move it or push it, or if I get a machine here in time to move it and push it. But yeah, got some nice green, good and ready to go. Um, and it's dirty, it, you know, it's worth the expense to me. I got it, you know, kind of had to beat it up to get it up here, but a lot of good wood. So what we're gonna work on today is that little bear I showed you. Let me get back in the shop. The canoe bears. And we are working with, this is the exciting part here. Uh, what we are working with is a nice dried out, hard to carve piece of blue stained pine. Blue stain is not bad. It's not a horrible thing that you have to avoid all the time. This is what I didn't tell you guys in the other videos because I was rushing through those videos trying to get a video made. I said I like the same color. I said that I use the same color wood. Yes, as you know, if I'm gonna bring it in here and store it, I want it all to be the same color when I bring it in here. So I'm gonna work hard to get that because these are, these are Primo Block. They come from fresher trees. This, I skinned it early and then I left it outside for the longest time and I didn't, I didn't give it any care. It was undercover part of its time. Uh, it was out in the weather part of it. It was out in the weather all summer because when I moved shops, I didn't, didn't really have the cover space outside to store stuff. As you saw, there's nowhere out there um, where I actually keep a pile of logs yet. I haven't set that up. Um, but you can carve this. The advantage here with this, this is gonna dry, it's gonna be ready to go. Once, once you're done carving it, it's gonna be ready to go. Um, switch camera here. Get you set up and then we'll get carving. Uh, so the blue stain pieces, I will use them. I have I have a few out that, that have preserved and dried, uh, left out in the weather. And the, the advantage there is you need a piece right away, boom, it's there, it's ready to go. You carve it, it's ready to go. It doesn't have to dry. Um, unlike the lounging bear carving that I did yesterday, this guy, he's still pretty green and wet, so he's got to dry for a while before he actually is ready to sell. Give him uh, two to three weeks, a few weeks up here on the shelf. He's going to crack out, he's going to open up, then I repair him. That's when I know that he's about ready to go. So let's get right into this. Uh, the blue stain, the problem with it is blue stain is really crappy wood. It, You'll see when I'm cutting that, that there's times it looks like it's exploding when I'm cutting into it. Well, blue stain, uh, I'm gonna turn this off. Thanks for listening to my awful guitar playing, putting up with it. I gotta have some music to make it sound cool. Um, blue stain is a weak wood, okay? Anywhere you see the blue stain in a piece of dried out wood, it's gonna be like splintery, kind of falling apart. So we don't want to use it on small areas. On the knee of this bear, it's fine. Down on the foot, around a knot, it's fine because that knot wood is gonna hold that. Um, out here on the ears, if I can avoid it, I will. If I have to use it, I will. Um, that's what we're doing right now is working on kind of lowering and getting the head in position, less I have blue stain up here the better I have none of it here so I'm just trying to condense and squish everything together now uh, let me grab the other canoe bear this guy's made out of some primo pine he's all dry and ready to go oh you don't have to Woody I'm gonna publish I'm gonna publish this one um, so you can watch it later I, I am in the habit now creates uh, of uh, 43 thousandths gauge steel chain. I knocked the backs of the teeth down, um, trim the rakers forward a little bit. That means I didn't take the tops down. I just took the fronts off the rakers to lighten the chain a little bit, make it easier cutting. 
And you'll see this stuff cuts really hard. It's not a dull saw, it's, it's the wood cutting hard. Just kind of, you saw, if you really want to learn about these type of bears, lounging bears, lazy bears, bears with, with more dynamicness to them, um, more of a pose, there is the video on this guy, and we get into that. It's all angles. It's all angles and roundness, uh, and it takes time. It takes a lot of time <clears throat> to build up and... And get yourself to that point. Sorry, I'm getting in the way, trying to plug in so I don't die and lose this. Um, it takes time to build up your speed and your mindset. We will do this again like we did yesterday. Put him there. We're doing two of, of a like. Same leg going the same way. This one's arm is in a different spot. That's the only thing different. Uh, hopefully I got the camera situation figured out. <clears throat> so this guy has, he has the curvy arm that comes around and holds a fishing pole. And then he's got this arm behind his head. So we're gonna put that here and just range it in. We do it the same way every time. Because I still have to get the, the canoe part in here. So that's all spatial. Now we have the belly part. This is in general because we know we know the canoe comes to a point here and it's gonna be it's gonna be roughly that wide where the bear is sitting. And you don't have to be all perfect and dialed in on this. You know, just kinda kinda go with the flow. Make it your own. That's what I mean. I gotta stop here for a minute, interrupt for a second. Sorry. Hope this doesn't lose our signal or bug you guys. <clears throat> Where's the typing? Just letting a friend know that I'm live. He always wants me to let him know, so. Letting them know. Trying to go back. The, the whole phone messaging and all that back and forth is crazy, man. Um, all right, so, yeah, we're going to keep carving here. <clears throat> now, I, I have it opened up. I know where the arm is. I know where the leg is. It's not perfectly proportional. I'm going to give myself... Space here just for the arm and I'm gonna draw in about where the bottom of that canoe is now the bear is laying down inside the canoe so you want like on the side of the canoe people like that look it's it's more woodsy That was one thing I didn't say in that one video where I was talking about It's not bad to have it. The main 
main thing is it's just really hard wood to carve. It could slow you down. The other cool thing about blue stain wood, this wood here, tends to be, hey, Tom, there you are. Good, you got my message. The thing about this wood, the yellow wood and out of blue stain or even knot wood, it's really tight and it's dry. Um, drier wood's harder to carve. screaming which is uh, you know it's a good hard piece of wood um, we're gonna do videos on hardwoods too at some point I do carve hardwoods too I just I push the pine before production I also do cherry for production pieces a lot. I cut this man it just smells so resiny it's beautiful resiny wood I like the smell of it so there's advantages and disadvantages there's no set way to do with it. I'm going to try. That's about the side of my canoe and like I said I'm marking it out. I'm not doing definite right now. I just want to know where my foot is, where the side of the canoe is going to be. <coughs> that guy's laying there. And this is, this is fun to bring you guys these pieces uh, because they're, you know, they're a challenge. They're different. They're not, they're not the typical ones they're there. So my canoe is about there. My arm. You probably can't see it real well, but I don't want to get the camera in here too close. I have to carve. My arm's about here. <clears throat> the side of my canoe comes in under the arm, so probably here. And we'll see in a minute. Now I want to make I want to make kind of kind of that shape if that makes sense. <clears throat> to get this shape, right? We're gonna go. We're gonna go with this shape outside of that. It's like a like an oval with two points at each end. <laughs> you saw there. I cut in. I stayed here about where the, the hole is on my bar and then once I got past the arm past where about the paws because I can see it on top here that's where I plunge in as far as I can Five. Yeah, Tom, yeah. Good idea. Do mushrooms. Uh, Woody, you could always try doing a pyramid, right? Make a pyramid, make a box, and make a ball. You could do that with a stock saw. Um, we're going to do a video on those because those are important shapes to learn. Uh, make an egg shape and then see my skull video see how much of that you could figure out to do with a regular saw 
or if you have other tools, chisel for some parts. I used to do uh, chainsaw and chisel all the time. I used to do hatchet and chisel carving all the time before I could actually really afford chainsaws. Um, and it's, it's good practice to get into learning how the wood cuts. Good question. Give me ideas of what to do. I would say go out. If you saw the video where I did the other bear, stain just breaking away causing breakaway weak wood you got to watch for that when you're doing these that's why I say it's preferable not to do this if you're in production and you have time to dry your pieces um, for ideas of what to do uh, make bowls make bowl shapes just go out and carve figure something out where you're, where you're using, Figure something out where you're using that saw like a carving tool. Make big round shapes and logs. Did you see my octopus video where I made a big wavy arm? Make a big wavy arm. Make it, put a twist into it. Uh, before I had carving bars and chains and all that, carving chains, uh, I was doing big chain links with a chainsaw. That's what I was doing. Uh, I was carving faces. You could carve a whole face with just a stock saw if you make the face big enough. Um, it's, it's a matter of just going out and trying stuff and, and getting into the carving aspect, not just cutting, not just cutting and blocking out. Um, you can do a complete block out of a bear head with just a stock saw if you're careful. Uh, so yeah, there's lots of things you can try. making the shape of the canoe that's what I see that saw jump that wouldn't happen in green wood there's one you could do too Woody just go out and practice plunge cuts and be safe and, and be ready for that saw to jump and, and get some wet, get something wet and soft to cut into first. Um, less likelihood, or if you have ice, if you started making the ice stuff, start, you know, making your ice block. That's the advantage of ice over wood. You learn a lot of cutting practice doing ice over wood because your saw doesn't jump as much with ice, but it still can. Now I'm just going to cut the full length after I get his shoulder established. See, now we're, now we're on to this shoulder. Shoulders to the ears. I always remember with bears, shoulders to the ears. I I talked about that in the last video. You see that just explode and fly off there? Be ready for it if you work in dry wood. Remember, shoulders to the ears. Keep this simple. Shoulder about where the ear. Shoulder stops where the ear starts. Shoulder starts where the ear stops. Or what? If you're like me and you learned on your own, you learned on your own and you are never scared and you never got hurt. There's a few of us out there. But we'd never sue anybody if we tried something that we saw them do and then got hurt doing it. So that's the big difference.
I don't know if life should need disclaimers all the time. It's like how many times have I bought a fish from a restaurant or a grocery store and gotten a pin bone and on damn near choked on it? That's my fault because I thought the fish might, you know, I, I tried to... I tried to think that the fish was free of bones. Not true. Fish have bones. You can't get them all. It's, it's processed by humans. Uh, no, never an accident, ever. Well, okay, a couple of really one, you know, dumb ones when I was being dumb and I was messing around and I was putting myself, you know, might as well hold a lit stick of dynamite at that point. But no, never, never anything major, never anything scary, never anything that I... Uh, I didn't actually think was going to happen when I was doing it. i just been that kind of kid. You're going to play a fire, you're going to get burned. Carving should not be like playing with fire. Be safe. Be informed. Like I say in other videos, use your head. You don't be afraid to think. Maintain that saw. I have videos about maintaining saws. I have videos about safety that go over basic safety protocol. I have all kinds of videos out there. And that's the thing, if people watch those videos, take the time and watch a video. See how us old guys do it. See how we stay safe. See how we stay doing this as a living every day. Whether we're doing it as a living or just a hobby. Why do we keep doing it and why do we stay safe? Because we, we use our heads. bad breakaway piece that could hurt you that's why I say be safe take your time take it slow I'm going quick because I have I have that in me that's how I carve better that's how I feel safer you don't have to go so quick You see how I went in just a little bit to start that curve? I'm not just burying in. A, the wood's breaking away. B, the thing keeps twisting and moving. That's staying safe, going light. Establish your shape. Establish where you were wanting to cut. Eventually, I'm gonna lift this up and make it easier on myself. Right now, I'm just getting that shape. This is outside of where the canoe, about the shape of the canoe, still have room. Just going to take a chainsaw tooth. Um, the shape, the predominant shape for these canoe bears is this shape. It's called the ovoid. It's used a lot. Um, we're using the ovoid on the ends. And we're using the ovoid for the canoe shape. That's our focus. As we do this, we think about what parts of the bear are sticking out past the canoe. We're putting him inside that ovoid, but we're giving him windows outside of it. So the arm line, I'm going to make it about here. Sorry, this keeps moving. 
uh, like I said in my other video, when these, it's this decking, it's this piece of plywood that I put on top of my cart, when it wears out, it allows things to slide and turn a lot, so I should be replacing that at some point, but there's, there's only so much time for things. Now, there's nothing, we're working this side, over here on this side, there's nothing sticking out past the canoe, over past where his foot is. You see, we're, now we're coming over here. So I know I can cut that shape based on in reference about, about where that is. I could use a marker to mark it or I could just eyeball it. Get rid of it all. I'm not using a long enough bar, but I don't really have a decent carving bar long enough that's not 325 pitch, so I'm going with what I got right now. All those other chains and bars that I made need lots of work. I don't have to I get laid off from my stone job soon. Frankly, I kind of look forward to because when you're doing that, you're not out spending money to get to work every day. But the other drawback of that is you're not making that regular pizza. leg just buries into the canoe, just under the bed. I'm going to stay up a little bit high. I'm going to stay up closer to the top of the leg. Stop here because there's my canoe. You see, it's a lot of odd cutting. There's no set rhyme or reason. want to block out. Get your block out. Get that in and block the tip of the canoe. Now, this is moving. You can either pry it out or safety cut it. Safety cut is going into the meat of the chunk and slowly wedging it out. See, I knew that was going to happen because I saw how it was moving. That takes time and practice. Now this is the top of the other leg. <clears throat> so we can now... Start find the edge of our canoe. The edge of the canoe comes out underneath the arm. Goes here, disappears here, and comes back out. Same thing over here. Goes here. Disappears here and comes back out. So it's just so. Don't worry about speed or time. That's that will come with with practice and and with your time in your shop. I've had people ask me to teach them quick carbon. I said I can't teach you quick carbon because I'm not a very good quick carver myself. I only go as fast as I'm allowed most days. It's like being on the road, there's speed limits. Now, I almost want the other foot showing up here. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I don't know if it's going to work because I erased the other hip over here mistakenly, I did that. 
That was not very smart of me. But it's a bear in a canoe. I'm going to get rid of that. Bring this leg down a little bit more. I'm going to make it all work. The other leg could just be nothing. It could be totally disappeared. <clears throat> Here, it's just a little piece. Yeah, it's, it really adds to the piece, but if you forget it, if you mess up like I did, there it is. All you have to do is, is just put a little lump over here at some point. Because see, this is his hip here. That one's established. Now, for the other one. Let's see if we can do it. I'm going to still, I still want to see a foot here if I can. I'm going to play make-believe and... and Etch out a foot, and I'm going to make it extra super wide, right? Extra super wide. I may, I may even put the foot here because my canoe is here. I have all this room to work with, right? So let's work on that. Let's say the foot. Let's say that other foot's here. Let's say both legs are crossed. Let's work with that for a minute. You guys saw me make a mistake. Did I, did I freak out and throw the piece away? No. Did I get discouraged? Did I stop working on it? No. Now I'm more motivated because I want it right. So this is our advantage. This is off from that. This end is off from this end. So now I'm looking down it, looking down it this way. I can sight it in. That's where give yourself room. Going past this line right I know I can get rid of everything underneath it though. I don't know if we're out of oil. I smell it. You'll smell it. Nope, we're good. You'll smell it in your bar when the oil heats up or the bar heats up. Time to stop and check your oil. Or even even blow it out. work of the um, but I don't always see them it's a little bit you know trying to run the saw and this and that and everything else a little <clears throat> a little bit too much for me to keep track of I will probably go at the end of the live feed and look at questions That's a good strategy for me because I'm not good at doing all this stuff. Like I tell family and friends all the time, I'm a cop and not a salesman and not a computer guy. So any of that stuff that you throw into my carving situation, <coughs> now it's New stuff for me to learn and operate. It's sort of like 
like I say, like driving, driving the car, drinking a cup of coffee, reading the paper, and playing on the cell phone all at the same time, and rolling and smoking your own cigarette on the way to work while you're driving. <clears throat> Those things are tough to do all at once. Even if you drive with your knee, which is an old thing that, that you know, 1970s, it was fine. 1980s, it was fine. But in the 90s, if a cop saw you using your knee to steer the car, you were immediately pulled over and ticketed very heavily. Right? Have, have you ever heard of anybody who was that good of a driver they could drive using their knee getting in an accident? No. The problem was... Other people trying it who weren't that good of drivers, most likely. That's most likely why they outlawed it. And it's funny, it's funny living in that world where they outlaw stuff like that. You can't be seen doing that. So if you have a Jeep with no doors on it, keep both hands on the wheel at all times, please. known a car to stay straighter whether you have a finger on the steering wheel or both hands. I've actually taught people to drive and told them relax your one hand's fighting the other right now that's why you're going all over the road. Let the car do its thing. Keep it between the <clears throat> keep between the mustard and the mayo as they would say just focus on that. Don't worry about how just do it. <laughs> Right? It's it, it, it's a different outlook in life, different world. So we're going to try to do the other hip here because we screwed up. Just an impression of the other hip because now... Now the actual canoe part is getting awful low, but it still looks like he's laying in the canoe chilling out, so we're good, right? Go down little, little bits at a time in progression. Oh no! And you stop. You stop before you get to the elbow. Little pieces, little progression. It's been an hour already. This one's going a lot faster than the other. Why? Because I'm not fighting the phone this time. I'm not fighting technology. I did yesterday, 90% of that video was me trying to get the camera in the right position. Yeah, I, just, I just tapped my... ...of this situation. The head. We still have room with the head, the need for the head to be lower. There's a lot more head that wants to appear from this carving. So now I can bring the arms down. Yes, the canoe is low. The side of the canoe is awful low, but I'm bringing all this down, right? It's it's a piece of artwork. It's going to look right in the end. You just got to keep working with it. Now I'm bringing the arm down. The arm, the arm is thinner than the chest and the shoulder. You give him a chest and a shoulder. That's, that's anatomy. That's, uh, you know, using basic stuff. That's where I say anatomy, like if you were to do Cowboy Slim, <clears throat> like he could have a sunken in chest and like really big shoulders, right? And I'd give him that like, I can't even do it, I'm too fat. But I'd give him kind of that, that, that like gunslinger look, right? Like or the, 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 even farmers, like if you did a caricature carving of a farmer, he'd have a small chest and big huge shoulders. 
Uh, why? Because that's, I don't know. It just says kind of, you know, that look. <laughs> but anatomy, think about anatomy on a cartoony level. Bears, thicker body than arms. People, thicker body than arms normally. You go the other way, now it becomes very whimsical and he's a skinny dude, maybe with a pot belly, like sunken in chest, big pot belly. There's one Woody, go carve a guy with a big pot belly and his sunken in chest and really big shoulders. I don't know, man. Uh, when I was starting carving and I didn't have carving bars, I didn't have even the internet besides pictures. We had pictures to look at of other sculptors, other carvers. There's maybe five or six people on the internet back then. Uh, so you'd look and you oh, look at that guy's stuff. His stuff's weird. I like that. Like he's, he's climbing a tree, an old tree stump, and he's carving steps as he's climbing this huge tree stump. Or he's doing like really weird stuff, taking a log, making several cuts in the log, and then making a rainbow out of the log, right? Like uh, so many ideas. I watch videos for ideas or I look at pictures. Um, that's how I learned was looking at pictures and I, I'm going to go try that. So picture books of simple carvings like chain links, balls, boxes, squares, triangles, pyramids, egg shapes. Those are the basic fundamentals. Chain links. Chain links are great. It's a great thing to learn. You can carve the entire chain link with a chainsaw, stock bar. If you're careful, if you learn plunge cutting and round, like you learn how to use the tip of that saw lightly without having it jump on you, um, and then you can take a sawzall and you can you can use that to actually separate the two links and you're done, right? Those tricks. <clears throat> it's all about resourcefulness. Be resourceful and and take your own path in it, really. See there, I'm marking out the arm. In. All right, so what's happening now, guys? What are we What are we doing here? What do we see? Right, we're almost done. We're almost ready for detail. We're almost ready to start detailing this carving in a simple hour. Right, I had it started before then, but I basically recarved the whole thing pretty much from what I had started. So basically, in an hour, you can get to this point after you practice. It, if your carving will stay still for you. <coughs> Even if it takes you a week to get to this point, you're still there. Does it feel right? Are you um, important? It gets really eyeball. It just yeah, it looks good. Looks good. Bang, let's go. But if you're having trouble with that, here's the tip: take two bars, two sticks. Doesn't have to be perfect. Get them to go outside of the parameters of the canoe, take a tape measure, and you want things relatively at the same level, so you can even go, I'm gonna measure the bottoms of these two things, right? I'm gonna go, okay, there's roughly 16. Okay, there's, off the bottom, roughly 15. So, winged out out here, it's chasing off, it's an inch off, it's an inch shorter this way, about five, six inches out. That means my angle of repose here, it's off by probably five, 10 degrees. This one is not parallel with this one, but does it look right? That's what's important. That's, that's more of an advanced measure, more of an advanced thing to worry about. Um, like I said, just eyeball it, but there was your secret formula for if you, if you had to do these and they had to be straight. Sometimes 
as a carver, you might get a commission, and they might say, absolutely, I want, I want everything straight and square, blah, blah, blah. So you got to be able to do it, right? And now you have to learn that technique. If you, if you get that commission and you want it, you want to keep it, right? It's, a, it's cool. That's, that's the whole beauty of this business is we learn stuff. We're learning as we go because there's no written book on this yet that really tells you how to do everything. Well, People have written books on carving. Wow. Wow. There is only one person ever that I've met. He does the top of my too, about with the other side. There was only one person in my whole carving career that had a lot of books out there, had a lot of information. He was an instructor, and he actually told me that he wrote the book on carving. Well, I hate to say it, no matter how good you were, you were wrong, because the first thing he would tell me is that he was the authority. I mean, he was a well-known guy. He was really well-known worldwide. Um, wasn't very well-liked, though, by many. <clears throat> because he was a judge at many competitions. He was a competitor. He won prizes and stuff. He, you know, he could carve anything. Very talented guy. But he had this outlook as though, well, first off, he didn't think chainsaw carvers had any business being chainsaw carvers. He didn't think that, and this is true. I'm telling you, this is, this is what I put up with learning in my career as a carver. I was told for years by this guy that I looked up to. He was a mentor of mine when I was a little kid. Um, he had, you know, big commissions all over the world, whatever. I uh, taught classes at these big, big places that were well known for teaching craft workers, you know, how to carve stuff for cathedrals. But he, uh, he had, he had such an opinion about things that he thought that his way was the only way to do it. And I showed him over the years that he's wrong, and he's still. He still to this day would say, well, you're not anything until you've done it the way I've done it. So, take it for what it is. I didn't dislike him. Wow, this the signal thing's getting horrible. But I was allowed to go into his shop, wreck his tools too hard because I wanted to go faster. Um, so, I let, him, I let him dog me all these years and I showed him, I showed him where I was coming from. He didn't appreciate it. Uh, sorry for his luck, but nobody wrote the book on carving. That's my whole thing. Uh, I thank that great mentor throughout my childhood, but as I was growing up, he didn't want nothing to do with me after that. So sadly, I had to go do my own thing, right? And happily, because I was happy doing it. And I found out nobody's written the book on carving yet. There's no set ways to do nothing. Doesn't matter if you're carving spoons with a whittle and knife or if you're carving them with a chainsaw. Nobody wrote the book on carving. There's a guy I know who can he can carve the, the alphabet on a toothpick with a chainsaw holding it in his mouth. I don't know if he holds the sire of the toothpick. Not gonna say really. Don't really care. He's a he's a show monkey. He's a weird one too. But Everybody does their own thing. There's no 
set way, there's no set of rules. I've hired people that came from his school on my job. I've hired people that he had instructed over the years. On jobs where I had to get a lot done. And you know what? They didn't want to do a lot, and they wanted a lot of pay for it, and it made my life difficult. So, like I say, there's no written book. Lots of ways to do it. And there's the conventional. I like the conventional. I've never had a problem with conventional old school carving trade. The trade, the action, there are set things to do as a, as a spoon carver or a whittler. Um, there are traditions. There are traditional tools in there. Like the totem pole carvers of the Northwest. I think they all they all carve pretty much the same. I don't know, I can only say that after years of studying that beautiful art form. Traditionally, they all use the same tools, but there's ones out there who use chainsaws. And they use all, uh, a lot of other tools that aren't traditional to the Northwest. Are they still considered totem pole carvers in that tradition? Yes. Why? Because they're greatly known for it and they've applied themselves to it and proved themselves that they belong there too. They are accepted by the master carvers. That's, I guess that's my point in, in rambling on about that. Depends on where you grow up. It depends on what tradition of learning and approach you you are raised in with a certain trade or art form. for listening to my speech there. I think it's important. Overseas and how to I think it's really cool. Uh, I was in I was in the Masons Union for a while. Didn't matter how many years of experience I had as a stone worker or bricklayer, whatever, uh, when I was in that union, there were things that I didn't know real well, and there were things that I knew real well, and the fun part about it was getting into the things that I had done in the past, but not a lot of. When I was in that union and training, they put us in a training school, academy, masonry academy, uh, I got to practice and get good at those things. Even though I might have known how to do the basics, I still couldn't do it efficiently because I hadn't done a lot of it and I hadn't worked with other masters. So if you get that opportunity to something, don't knock it just because you don't understand it. Um, I didn't know what I was getting into in you know, I thought I was going to go in there and <clears throat> people were telling me, oh, you'll be a journeyman in a year or two. You got mad skills. You got all this about stone. You've been doing stone work, yada yada, so many years. Um, it's different. That's all I can say about it. It's a lot different than that. You don't know until you go in it. Now, see, I have this here, and it's just like carving. You don't know 
what you're capable of until you get out there and you start carving, until you start taking jobs doing carvings, until you have the confidence to say yes to stuff and not get yourself into a lot of trouble. <laughs> so we're just cutting the sides of the canoe. I want to be careful now. I want to watch. notice the more I talk the more I bullshit right the more I just talk about stuff in general <clears throat> the quicker I carve the better I carve the more carving I get done the more you see me do um, because when I'm carving I'm thinking about stuff I'm thinking about a lot I'm not even so much thinking about the carving as I am sorting out my head from different things you know that's 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 what I'm doing. Uh, if I'm doing a job on carving, I'm only nervous about that job before it starts. Dealing with the logistics, dealing with pricing, dealing with getting everything staged and set up. Setting up scaffold, my least favorite thing to do. Hardest time for me to just get sidetracked in my lost in thoughts and go thing, right? Scaffold has to be set and ready and perfect for me when I get up there. I don't want it moving. Um, that's why I don't like doing it because it's one of those, it's like, it's like building a motor so you can only go five miles an hour and it takes forever. But it's got to be done. It's part of the job. thing about it usually when you go to a job where you got scaffold and you're setting up is being watched everybody wants to watch everything you're doing they want to watch everything every step you take and talk to you while you're doing it even if you're not carving they want to talk to you while you're carving while the saw's running you know like just flat for getting ear infections. We don't want that. Anyway, sidetrack. Um, when I'm carving, I put the music in my ears and put headphones over those to deafen the saw, the gas saws, because I don't want to hear that all day. Running them all day long. Right? And what is, what's the first thing somebody does, walks up to me, just starts talking to me? Like, I, dude, I am, I'm looking right at you. Hold on, let me pull this off. Let me pull that out of my ear. First, got to wipe my hands off, though. Don't want that junk getting back in my ear. Hold on, stop talking. Give me a second. You know, like you want to tell them that, but they don't ever get it. They want to know right then, right there. They just want to keep talking. No clue what you're dealing with. No clue what you're going through. Or if you're choking on sawdust and they want to talk to you and ask you a bunch of questions, takes you forever to even get a word out. They're gonna keep. They're gonna keep talking to you. They don't care you're choking. You can sit there, gagging, hacking and gagging away. Don't matter. Don't matter. They want to know something. That. That as a carver, as an artisan, as a craft worker, as we are craft workers, we are in a trade. We are making our own trade. That's why we do this. We're making a trade. We're not just out there gallivanting about having fun. I 
should be making these videos for you guys right now if I hadn't applied myself and made a trade out of this for myself. I would not be doing it anymore. There we are, all roughed out. See the ovoid shape a little bit? I had a little bit of extra message here. That's gonna sand out, right? It'll, it'll taper, it'll look good when it's done. Uh, now, and I look at it from the top, right? Just eyeball it, how's it look? Got a lot extra over here, don't we? So, now we kind of want to work on that. There is, <clears throat> there is the same type of extra here. It's just, this is too flat. We can get rid of that. Go back and forth, back and forth. Benchmark it out. Benchmark. Benchmark is important. I use benchmarks all the time. Masonry. The secret to being a good stonemason, good builder. Good benchmarks. I mean, I can't stress that enough. Good benchmarks is key. When you're doing masonry and building, sorry, I got to switch cords here. They get tangled. Um, when we're doing masonry and building, personally, I have trouble doing a job if I don't get my benchmarks, and I tell people that on the job all the time, I tell the boss, I tell the other contractors, I need this, this, and this, so I can make my benchmarks, or else I can't, I can't tell what I'm doing. It's not going to come out straight. So that's important, and you you want to recognize that. There's your trade. This is our trade. Benchmarks are important. It help you. That's what I say. Don't, you know, you might be learning, having fun right now, but <laughs> you're building a trade. You're getting into this because there's, you can make money doing it. You're spending money to do it. You might as well learn to make it too, right? So make it a trade. That's subject too. Like people look at this and devalue it. Easily. The shop. <clears throat> Would I be spending money on saws and gas and oil? Oh, man. Personally, I'd rather have a boat and have free time and go out on the weekend. Personally, I'd rather have a race car. But guess what? stuff like that you start waking up and you're like man I want to be on the boat today I can't be on the boat today or you get all you go through all this you go through all this headache to get that dang boat out on the lake and the weather turns bad it gets cold it was warm when you started <coughs> yeah, it's looking a little better and then, by the time you get to the lake and you're all there and ready to go, it gets cold. Nobody wants to stay out there anymore. Day's over, right? It's not. It's kind of like skiing. Okay, I look at it. I look at it like skiing or snowboarding. Two things I love to do are snowmobile riding. Those are great things to do, but I couldn't keep doing it if I wasn't doing it professionally. So what did I do? <clears throat> I got a job at a ski resort. No, I didn't become a professional snowmobile rider. I wanted to so that I was paid to just go ride snowmobiles every day, <laughs> but I couldn't do that. And guys, too. Like this. Some guys figure it out. Some of us have figured it out. And 
put the time in. We put a lot of time. Those guys you meet that ride snowmobiles for a living, <clears throat> what do they do for a living on that snowmobile? A, they're probably a researcher up in some snowbound country or region of the world, right? So they get to ride that snowmobile everywhere as part of their job. It's looking a little better. Um, or they're a professional stuntman on a snowmobile or a professional snowmobile racer and basically have to go out whether they want to or not and race, risk breaking their neck every day, all day long. Pressure of sponsors, pressure of races. It's like being a tree guy. People love, there's lots of people that love to climb trees. Lots of people that even love to climb trees and do tree work, limbing trees, caring for trees, thinning trees. Your day up in the trees all day long, right? Well, go do it for a living. When you get into doing it for a living and you're independent or even working for a company, it's going to be one of those things where there's going to be days where you're going to wake up and you're just not going to want to deal. You're, oh, this is a tough removal. Uh, <clears throat> it's just dirty. All right? I want to stop doing these. Carbon for a living is just the same too. There's stuff I had to do as a living as a carver. I'd wake up. I'd wake up on that day if I had a show and I didn't want to go do a show. And I'd be down in New York City trying to do this. You see, I'm just being very careful because it keeps moving. This is why I like this clamp setup, because even when a piece is being difficult, it still gives you, you can open this clamp like a V and it'll clamp better. And we can try that. Um, what was I saying? Oh, when I was doing shows down in New York City, I never missed my home more. I never missed out. Try putting them up online somewhere and selling them, hopefully. Uh, didn't matter what I was making per hour down in New York. Didn't matter if I only worked two hours a day and still made a lot that day. I wanted to be back home. I wanted to be back in my shop just chilling. The last thing I wanted to do was muster up the self-preservation to go out in front of a crowd of people and try to be creative on days that I did not feel creative. I did not feel like carving for people. I just wanted to do my own thing. But that's the, that's the double-edged sword. Make a living at it, and you're going to end up hating you're going to end up not liking it. It's going to end up beating up on you. <clears throat> so you need, you need that understanding with anything like this that you do. If you're going to actually get into it, and we are making a trade. See, I talk a lot when I'm having difficult things and just working it out, right? This wouldn't stay put. That was that kept losing connection. <coughs> A lot of stuff there. My throat gets dry when I talk. Whether I talk or not, when I carve in front of people, my throat gets dry. Look on carving. We 
are making a trade for ourselves, we need to protect going to be another two hour presentation. I hope you guys like them. Um, I think the other one just popped up, like just published. See how that V works? You can't do that with that jaw horse. Watch my video about the jaw horse. Jaw horse, if you want it, if you want to try it, it's, it's probably a great tool. Me, I've tried them a few times. There's a lot of things I don't like about them. They tip over. Uh, you can't adjust the height on them. I need height adjustment more than anything. really want to show you guys this because even without this, even without the wood cl wood clamp, I'll show you guys something. Stay right there. Stay right there a second. Stare at these two things. I got to go, I got to go look for something. I got to, because I want to show you this. It's going to be fun. Well, it's going to be interesting. You might learn something from it. Let me show you these. All right, so you got those. I don't know where things are, so I got to go looking. Be right back. All right, sorry, sorry. This try again thing's getting tough. No, I'm seeing it like a thousand times in half an hour. Um, when I started, I had them all around my carving site, and they were none of them was the same height. I had big ones, I had little ones. That gave me those platforms to move stuff. Screw a piece of plywood to the bottom, screw it to the stump, go, right? Use the chain to hold stuff down that you want up on angles so that plywood's not, right? Or you could even, I mean, it's the kind of thing, be inventive, where with those clamps and a piece of plywood, because, because you can angle this clamp, you see what I'm getting at here? Because you can angle this clamp one way or the other, now... Say I had a piece of plywood in here and a wedge. If I open this up enough, it's just, I, I'm matching the angle, right? Flat to the table, angle with the plywood, right? Easy, easy deal. This was always the quickest for me. I still use this. When I'm hollowing bottoms out, I'll grab the chain, throw it on the carving after I take it off the plywood, Lay it down, hollow the bottoms out. I don't want to get my clamp and sit there and futz around trying to get the clamp stuff ready. No, use a chain. Use some weight, get sandbags. Just don't, don't hit them, don't carve into them. It's going to take you more time doing it this way, but it works. It's, it's a great technique. I, I just did it one day. I came up with it. I'm sure other people have to. And now 
here, the trick is, right, what are we doing with these, with these laying down carvings? If you watch the other video, I explain it. I'm not going to explain it a lot here, <clears throat> especially with blue stain mold. I explain this in a ton of videos too. Matching the grain, right? We're going to, we're trying to match the grain. We want to match our grain, which means your grain's going this way. So you don't want the saw cutting this way a lot. <clears throat> you see how I'm, <coughs> follow the grain more than what's anatomically correct at this point. It's artwork. It's a bear. It's fur. Show fur and show completeness. This tear, this tear is really bad, so I'm not going to do that that way. You know, there's times too. I'm sorry I carve and then talk and carve and talk. There's times too where I'll sit and fight with this little area for a long time to get it right because I keep getting that fuzzy ends thing that I don't like. doing it wrong if it's not coming out I do it wrong all the time or a lot of the time like I said in the other video I have to say these things I say these things in an authoritative manner with presentation because I'm developing too as I talk and carve because I don't do this all the time. I don't instruct all the time. Um, I'm not a professor of carving. If I talk it out, if I say, if I remind myself, you know, go slow. Don't always be anatomical. Make it look right, but you don't have to be perfect. I'm going to make these aren't that expensive, cheap investment. Or you can use like little cutting discs on Dremels. There's an Arbor Tech. I have an Arbor Tech. I did a video about that. Advantages and disadvantages. So it doesn't matter how you do it. I guess that, that's the point I was trying to get through <clears throat> the past 10 minutes with interrupted signal. Um, we now know we have the chain trick. Wonderful trick. But me being me, I'm not going to go through that pain with the phone going crazy and my throat, <clears throat> throat getting a little dry. I want to get through this and uh, have a semi finished product to show you guys. Just like in the other video, this is two for two now. We're going for a record here. I don't get them done this quick if I don't make a video of it. Like literally, I could turn the video, the phone on video and I could record myself and pretend that I'm talking to, I can't pretend that I'm talking to people I know you guys are there watching I know people are going to be there watching later so I'm making this for that I'm I'm not going to edit this it's going up so it makes it easier cuz I get these carvings done quicker um which I like. I like. Boom. There was. If I only did this for the day, it's done. That was my day. Had a pretty good day. Hung out with you guys. Did some carvings. Talked about carvings. Showed you a lot of weird things carving related that you probably didn't think of. Talked about a lot that most most people don't really talk about a lot. I can tell you guys anything. It's a matter of what you want to know or what I feel like telling. Right? The thing with video making is you often get yeah, okay. yeah, I want to make a video of that. Yeah, I want to make a video of that. Yeah, I want to make a video. How many videos? 
can I make in one week? videos all the time for you guys. I want to do daily digest, but I still have to work a job. I still have to pay for the shop. I, you know, the, the videos don't do any of that for me. I've tried. I try really hard. Why do I try hard at it? Because I want to be able to give you guys the most comprehensive, up-to-date. I want to have, like, saw, you know, all these things that I want to do but, yes, money and time is an object because some of us just don't have it. And no matter how hard we work at videos, YouTube makes it difficult for us as video makers. They have actually started hiding my notifications now. Um, it made it hard for me to... made it hard for me to publish a lot of stuff that... I worked really hard at making and edit Chainsaw Carver who makes videos and tries expenses for carving, um, it's very difficult because we own everything we do. YouTube wants to own it. Live feeds are awesome. Publish it. Your ad, YouTube's putting advertisers on there. I get a little bit of money from that. Don't work. It took me years to get to that point because you have to have so much of this and so much of that together. To do it. about saying I want to make money with this. But, the other thing is, now, with the live feed. I turn so much faster doing it this way. I get so much more done bringing you guys in here chit-chatting. Uh, sorry, I can't see comments. <clears throat> Let's check them right now, see if we keep signal. Where am I located? Where, what he said, where am I located? I am in the northeastern United States. I don't like to give out my location too much. That's just me. Um, not publicly, anyway. People find out where I am. It's a great place. that stuff you can email me or message me on Facebook and we can chat I'd rather do it that way I don't like long if people do email me please don't email me like a whole laundry list of questions <clears throat> asking me all these things and expecting me to answer in an email because emails take me forever to write if you want to message me and message me a whole bunch of questions um, do it over messenger because I can respond I see that right away I can go Yes or no? Real quick. I don't have to open an email and read through 
10,000 questions in one email. I can look at 10,000 little messages and go back to each one and answer each one individually. So, yeah, I do prefer that. Uh, there is a Facebook page that Tom has helped me set up. It's called Carving Stories. You can go there and find me, or you can look at my name on Facebook search, and it's the one with the little ice horse or glass horse. You'll see it in the, the little round circle picture. good at the social media thing guys uh, so don't expect me to know a whole lot about bimmy hashtag post post bake face face book book whatever uh, don't expect me to know how to use that stuff or why am I not here or there I don't know I've tried a few of them and they confuse the hell out of me I have YouTube some shops where I sell. I don't see the TikTok. I don't see the Apple Blaster or whatever they call them. I don't see all that. I'm not sure it. Because I don't get it. I'm not into that. I'm crazy. I don't play on phone screen. <laughs> Actually, there is a time where, yes, I do have to use apps to make a living. When I have time and when things are going good with the shop and that I'm caught up on videos, I do the Call it their uh, digging um, Instacart is the reason that I have this shop. Seriously, that's what funds this shop when I'm not selling it. That is it. That's the only reason I can afford to have a wood shop. What is that? little side hustle that I do. Um, I can afford this. I can afford this. Sometimes. Right now, now is a busy time. I'm investing heavily. I'm kind of sweating bullets right now. That's why I need to carve quick. Whether it's on my online store or in someone else's shop on consignment. Instacart on the side to pay for all this because that's what pay f pays for this. That's what keeps the shop going. There's a lot of hustle and bustle. That's why I hope someday for the YouTube channel to take up some of that slot. There's times I don't feel like going in the grocery store. There's times I don't want to get out of my dirty clothes. I want to be dirty all the time. I like it. I like it. I'm a dirty guy. That's what I like. I'm going to stop and grocery for people. I'm going to be clean. clean groceries up to their door. They're going to cancel their order. Change in occupation. 
So that's where we're trying. I'm trying to say, like, uh, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Before there was Instacart and all that Uber Eats. I mean, it it is such a simple way to make money. It's easy work, but. You're staring at a phone all day. You're staring at an app. You're arguing with that app. Uh, the app doesn't work all the time. It's got glitches. So, yeah, it'll drive you up the wall <laughs> if you're not, whether you are or not, a phone person, a technology person. I think it'll drive you up the wall no matter who you are. <clears throat> no matter how much you like having that phone in your hands, when you're given a list of things to do and you have to answer to that phone, it's convenient, but it also can drive you crazy because it tries to tell you to do things that you don't think you should have to do to get that job done. <clears throat> but now you're stuck doing it. It's just like working for a local university. we had to do stuff we either couldn't afford to do or we didn't want to do. We didn't think it was the right way to do it. go to academy and you got a roommate and you guys gel and you talk about stuff and you have a lot of sim yeah you can't vote they tell you you can't vote they tell you you can't vote the same vote as well. you both want to vote for this especially in the trades the real trade ones like building kind wiring uh masonry They fall into being led by the same people who leads a union of grocery store workers or a union of bus drivers or a union of, yes, it's labor, but it's not really trade related. It's not really skill set related. It's more politics related. Was upheld by this guy on the New York City. We never saw to talk to, but they they were more transportation related. Guys. Change now. Now it's a good union. Maybe I'll go back. I only didn't stick it out because they were not getting any work. I love the union. Nothing against it. I want to go back. But you got to put up with it. But then, now we get into Now we get into back with the gig industry, Uber, stuff like that. People are trying to say that. Contractor the contractor to Uber, Instagram, DoorDash, anything like that, is a 
a contractor to those guys, you're also you're you're actually a misclassified employee. But that thing is the worst thing ever that you could do. Worst thing ever you could do to your fellow contractors. You're gonna get the system shut down if you don't get your way. That's why there is where the unions come in where I don't like unions. Because they're trying to form union taxes out of every dollar that they pay you. So you're going to get paid less in the long run. <clears throat> you're not going to have write-offs. They're still going to pay you 50 cents to go do a delivery or two dollars. this Prop 222 goes through, you're going to have to work hours for them. You won't be able to decide. I can decide day or night what I want to do. That's why I do it. Because if I'm, if I'm caught up on carving, I go do that. If I'm not caught up on carving, I don't have to go do that at all. I still keep my job with them. They still ask me to come out and deliver it. They're starting to enforce these rules that no contractor, as far as how the website goes, as far as our rating system, we get punished if someone complains about a pack of peanuts that got ruined that we had nothing to do with. If we're just delivering the food and the, the shopper in the store that picked the item, you know, it's that kind of thing. Where a lot of moving parts and they're just trying to make it too simple. Uh, sorry if that bums you guys out. Uh, that's nice, man. And then where's that car? to see done that I'm showing you how to do. You're just seeing me detail right now. It's kind of mindless, so there's not a lot to it. I showed you some tricks. And I think it's working out so good. I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> some tips and tricks. The chain thing, you see the chain thing? That was kind of cool.
Now, I'm going to adjust this leg. This leg is big to me. It's a lot big. I'm going to adjust that as I go along. Uh, but there you see, I think I'm going to stop here because when I just said food, that's where my head's at right now. Oh, there goes the saw. So there we go. You see I need to make some adjustments. I will do that. <clears throat> but there's your piece. We drill a hole. Right? I just use a little drill and a paddle bit. This is three quarter, three quarter half, five eighths. That's about your size for these. You can go half. You can go inch if you want. You can make them bigger sticks like with my toilet paper holders, if it's going to be a TP holder. I don't normally do that with these as close to the floor. Um, people like, you know, about this height for toilet paper holders. You know, they don't like them right on the floor. I do. I'll put a roll of toilet paper on that. This won't break. But there you go. <clears throat> it's time for steak, dinner, lunch, chill out time. Of the thing because of all the things that I came up with to battle about while I carve and <clears throat> help me do this carve. If you guys saw the pace at which I do these on my own, you would never, I wouldn't have anybody watching me ever because it'd be like, well, why is it taking you? It takes you a week just to do one of these. Yeah, because I get distracted. I get, I, you know, I step away. Thanks, guys, and like and subscribe if this is something you want to see more of. Uh, I appreciate the likes and subscribes. That's what's helping me. I continue to keep doing this. So, yeah, thank you for your support and hanging out and watching. This has been the Canoe Bear presentation. <clears throat> Sorry I didn't finish, but you know how we do the rest. You can see it in other videos, the eyes, the sockets. I go in depth in that in the other video. So, have a good one, everybody. See you next time.